Hey what's up guys, it's a Surge. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my Predators Mark PvP build and just how to set it up uh, exactly and like get it perfectly and everything like that so you can do some insane damage in PvP. It's not going to be the best build in the world that has some pretty good utility and it's helpful in certain situations but you know, you're not going to be doing as much damage as you would with like a Sentry build or an Alpha Bridge build but it's really good for making people bleed and just an all around utility build and you know it actually can dish out a pretty insane amount of damage if you have it set up perfectly. Before I get into it, I just want to say sorry for the background noise, if there's any fan noise. Uh, I'm actually ordering a new microphone, I actually ordered it today, it should get here on I think Wednesday or on Thursday, it's a Samson C01U, I think SkillUp recommended that I get that one, so I'm going to get that microphone. Mine kind of, you know, tracks in a lot of background noise, so you're probably hearing my computer fan in the background. Sorry for that, and also my noise, or my noise, my voice is probably pretty nasally right now, uh, I'm pretty congested, so my bad, I just wanted to get a video out, but anyways, let's get right into the build, so like I said before, this build isn't going to be the best in the world, but it's still pretty nice, uh, mine isn't set up perfectly, there's actually a few things that I need to, you know, fix, and I'll go in depth with that while I'm talking about the build, mine is far, far, far from perfect, but it's just to give you an outline of what you'd make this build for, or how you'd make this build. So starting off, um, looking at my DPS, my DPS isn't that high. I've explained in a previous video, I'm sure a lot of you know by now, but still some people rely on the DPS stat. DPS doesn't mean anything. Mine's a little bit low right now just because uh, with the PB19 you don't have a grip and losing that accuracy makes a DPS stat freak out, but don't worry, I actually do a lot of damage. Just the DPS stat is flawed and also my knee pads don't have crit damage on them. I usually go for crit damage, and I would suggest that you go for crit damage too. It's just that I wasn't able to because I literally rolled it five times trying to get crit damage, and now I think it costs like six or seven hundred k credits, and I don't have that many credits, so you know I can't, um, I can't really, you know, or what am I saying? My DPS isn't going to be that high because I'm losing out on that crit damage, and I can't really roll it right now because I don't have that many credits. But you know. Just uh, take it with a grain of salt, the DPS stat. Just don't really pay attention to it. And then looking at my toughness, I got 405k toughness. I probably would have much higher if my base stat rolls were a lot higher. My holster isn't the best in the world. Uh, the firearms is pretty low on it. But usually what I would do is, um, right now I have, I think, three firearms pieces as opposed to two. Usually I just have two, and then I mod with firearms to get the 2800 firearms. And then I put the rest into stamina and, or into toughness. Like, my Deadeye build has around... 2900 firearms and then I have like 400 ADK toughness that's usually what I like to go for it's up to you if you want to do a lot of damage having it set up like this is nice too just like 400k toughness and then like 3000 or 3100 firearms just that I couldn't get all into toughness because I had too many pieces put into firearms and I just couldn't fix it or um, swap out the pieces but you know it's perfectly fine as long as you have over 400k toughness you should be fine in PvP and uh, you know, firearms. Just make sure you get around twenty or uh, twenty eight hundred twenty five to unlock gun towns like brutal and uh, responsive, depending upon how they are in the thing or um, in the slot, like which slot they're in. If they're the, if they're in the first slot, usually it costs twenty eight twenty five. It just really depends on which town it is. So moving on to what guns I'm using, I'm using a PP nineteen right now. Uh, the PP19, in my opinion, is the best SMG in the game. I actually made a video on it and used a spreadsheet. Mathematically, it is better than the MP7 if you set it up perfectly, but only by a hair. So for this build, I would either use an SMG. Even even the fact that you get um, extra assault rifle damage from Predator's Mark still doesn't make it good enough to use an assault rifle because with SMGs, you get built-in crit damage, and that built-in crit damage is going to be way better than just 800 flat assault rifle damage. So using an SMG is still going to be more beneficial to you. The SMG is probably the best gun in PvP, along with an M870. So, you know, for your primary weapon, you probably want to use either an MP7 or a PP19. For your secondary weapon, I like to use the M870, just because when I get in really close quarters engagements, I can, like, one or two shot somebody with this. And, you know, when people are running away, I just shoot them, like, two times, and it applies a bleed on them, and it does a pretty good amount of damage. So, you know, for your primary weapon... Go for an SMG for your secondary, I would suggest a shotgun, primarily the M870, so that you can do those really hard hitting shots up in close quarters and get like one or two shot kills. So, you know, that's pretty nice. And then, looking at every single piece of gear that I have, obviously I'm going to be using four pieces of Predator's Mark because of the extra uh, bleed that I get. So hit ten shots without switching target to make the target bleed. I'm sure many of you guys know how this works. You know, you just shoot the target ten times, then it makes them bleed as long as you don't switch from another target. And the bleed will actually prevent them from running. The only problem with this is that bleed resistance is a thing in the game, so like there's a chance that the bleed won't even apply. 
and people can use a first aid and get the bleed off. So it's not 100% practical, but you know, it's still pretty nice to use and kind of fun to use as well. So it's a pretty good build. Um, along with the fact that on the, the two set, you get 20% optimal range. It's not a huge bonus, but you know, it's kind of helpful for when people are running away. It just gives your SMG and your shotgun a, just a tiny added bonus. 20% really doesn't mean that much because it's, um, it's going to be additive, so it's not as much as it would be, as, or as you would think it would be. 20% only increases it by like 3 meters or something like that. So, you know, it's not a huge optimal range increase, but it's still pretty nice. And then for the other two pieces, of course, like usual, I got a reckless chest for the extra damage. Uh, the fact that I'm taking in extra damage, I don't really notice it that much. You know, you're gonna, probably going to get one shot by a sentry shotgun or anyways. So might as well just take the trade and get the extra damage anyways. You could use a vigorous chest too and then switch for a booster shot. That's a pretty good damage or a mechanic to use. I like to use a reckless chest because it's always up. But if you have high, if you have high skill power, choosing with the booster shot is pretty nice. And then you know got the savage gloves to make sure that I'm at crit cap when I'm using a pulse. And with this build, if I play solo, I use a pulse and gives me about 30% crit chance. So that'll get me at the crit cap with my savage gloves. So that's pretty nice. And then now let's take a look at every single piece individually and what minor stat attributes or major stat and minor stat attributes you want to go for. For the Reckless Chest, um, you just want armor, you always want armor to be able to reach armor cap, and then Exotic Damage Resilience, if you have this little bit of Exotic Damage Resilience, uh, you won't get one shot by Sticky Bombs when you're at full health. When you're at like half health, you're probably still going to die, but when you're at full health, a Sticky Bomb won't one shot you as long as you have this extra 13% right here, and your toughness is at least over 400k, uh, I'm pretty sure about that. Another thing you could go for is health. That's kind of nice. It's only like 3k health, though. I don't really see it being that much of a difference. It's only like one bullet or so. So it's not really going to help you out that much. So in PvP scenarios, I would definitely go for EDR. And then on your mask, like usual, you want to go for skill power. You're not going to need crit chance because you're using Savage Gloves and a Pulse. So you're already going to be a crit cap. So skill power is going to help your heal do more and your pulse do more damage. So that's helpful. On your knee pads, you're going to go for crit damage, like I mentioned before. I couldn't get crit damage on my mine. I are on mine. Rolled it so many damn times, and I just kept getting damage to elites and health and all this other crap. So you know, you always, always, always want to go for crit damage, just flat out damage. On the backpack, uh, I go for crit damage. You can definitely go for skill power if you want to. Skill power would be pretty nice if you're running solo and maybe you're using vigorous or something. Get like around 30k skill power. Have a really nice pulse and a really nice booster shot. That would be a pretty good way to set it up for me. I just like to do as much damage as possible, and I'm usually playing with a group. So, you know, having that extra skill power won't benefit me as much as it would if I was playing solo. So, you know, I like to go for the extra crit damage, and I just like to do as much damage as possible. For your gloves, this is really important. You want crit damage, and then crit chance. And then the other thing can either be SMG damage or shotgun damage, whichever you use the most. I go for the SMG because I like to use the SMG the most. I only really pull out the M8 when I get really close and I see other people using M8s. Usually I don't like to use the M8 because I think it's a little bit cheap. That's just my personal opinion. And I like to use an SMG more. I just think it's a lot more fun to use. So I went for the SMG damage, but you can definitely go for shotgun damage as well. Or maybe even assault rifle damage if you choose to use an assault rifle. But like I mentioned before, getting the crit damage on the PP-19 will let you do a lot more damage than a assault rifle would because the enemy armor damage bonus doesn't work in PvP. So, you know, definitely make sure to get crit damage and crit chance, and then for the other stat, either SMG damage, shotgun damage, or assault rifle damage, depending upon which gun you're using. And then for the holster, obviously, just make sure to get armor. If you don't get that armor, you're not going to get armor capped. Just in case you don't know, the armor cap is 75%, otherwise known as 5354, or 5,354. I'm a little bit over. Uh, that's just because of... That's just because I have really high rolls on my gear, and that's perfectly fine. Now, in terms of modding your gear, you want to go for um, stamina and skill power. Ooh, I actually... I think one of my skill power mods is displaced, but that's that's fine. Usually, I'd be at like 25k skill power. Yeah, I don't really need this right now. Or no, I actually have it on because without it, I'd be at like 74%. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. And he was moving on to mods. Uh, you want to get skill power all the time, depending upon what you need. You can either go for firearms or stamina for skill power. And then, or for the minder attribute, then you want to get skill power. Crit chance can be helpful too if you're not using savage gloves. But like I said before, you'll probably be at crit chance cap, so you don't really need the extra crit chance. So the extra skill power just let your heal do a lot more and your pulse do more. Uh, you can also vouch for armor if you need it to reach a cap. I actually needed it like I needed a very very small amount, and I just decided you know why not put it on. So I went for the armor there, but usually you know the rest of mine have skill power on them. 
So moving on to your skills, uh, right now I have attack link, that's just because I was doing dragon's Zest, but moving on to your skills, uh, for the first aid, or what am I saying, for the first skill you're going to be using first aid like always, uh, usually I go for overdose, but sometimes I like to use booster shot just so you do extra damage, it's really up to you. Uh, I usually go with overdose though, like I said before, it heals for more, and it gives you that overheal, which is pretty nice as well. And then for the second skill, I usually go for pulse with either scrambler. Scrambler can be really nice in PvP, but the problem is, is that it's not giving you a lot of crit chance, and it'll be it'll be really hard to reach crit cap that way. You'll be missing out on about 16% crit chance. So if you go with tactical scanner, then you're going to be doing way more damage. You know, as you can see, I got like upwards of what like 26% extra crit damage and 16% more crit chance, so it's a huge damage boost when you're using a pulse with tactical scanner, but a scrambler will protect you from that, so you know, if you're running solo, I would suggest using scrambler, and then maybe you could get some uh, crit chance mods in, or maybe you get like fierce on your gun to be able to make up for that crit chance that you're losing, just so that you can protect yourself from damage, but if you don't really care about protecting yourself, and you just want to do as much damage as possible, tactical scanner is going to be really nice as well, uh, you can always use zapper turret if you want to, it's kind of cheap, but you know, some people like to use it. You can also use Flashbang, which is pretty nice. Um, immunizer, if there's other people using shock turrets, maybe a smart cover. You know, it's really just up to personal preference, but usually I go with the first aid and the pull, such as what I like to use. And then for the talents, um, I have my talents on from doing Dragon's Nest. Okay. For talents, triage in a group scenario, you're always going to be using triage because you just you put a heal down and then everybody runs through it. You get your skills back faster. Triage is really OP right now. If you're running solo, I would go with Adrenaline. Just make your mech it heal you for a little bit more. For the next one, you want Critical Save. Use a mech it during low health to increase damage resistance by 40% for 10 seconds. Use a mech it, you know, get some damage resistance and it helps you out a pretty good amount. It's just like when you get really low health, use a mech it and then it just helps you take less damage when you need it. So that's really nice for survivability. One is none, great like always, when using a shotgun uh, in the dark zone, as we all know, the NPCs are pretty cancerous right now and you don't want to waste ammo, so using a shotgun, one is none counts for each pellet, so if you have like 100% accuracy, you literally won't spend any ammo, it's freaking awesome, and uh, just in PvP too, if you're landing chain headshots, you're getting the ammo right back in your magazine immediately, letting you do more damage, that's really nice, and then precision, you know, I'm sure many of you know about this, it just pulses an enemy after you headshot them, gives you, I think it's a 15% yeah, 50, crit chance and 26% crit damage. It isn't a huge bonus, but it's still actually pretty nice uh, if your pulse isn't up at 100% of the time, or if people are even using Scrambler, that's going to be pretty nice as well. Uh, other things you could use is one is er, uh, on the move, if you have like a pulse up all the time, or you can maybe go for combat medic with the group and use a med kit. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the build guys. I'm really sorry I don't have any gameplay to show you guys. I do promise that this build is pretty nice. Like I said before, it's not amazing. It's not going to be better than Alpha Bridge or Sentry, but it's a good contender. And like I said before, it has a pretty good amount of utility, you know, bleeding people, making them stopping from running because, you know, there's a lot of pussies in the dark zone these days that run away. So getting that bleed on them and catching up to them can be pretty helpful. Sorry I don't have any gameplay. I just seriously am kind of starved of time right now and I'm a little bit sick. So, you know, I just really couldn't get any gameplay, and quite honestly, I don't even play this game anymore. I kind of find PvP to be a little bit broken, but I have tested this build, and it seemed to work out pretty nicely. I just wasn't recording at the time, and, you know, I didn't really get that much good footage. I just checked to see how much damage it would do, and the utility on it, and I actually used it uh, back in 1.2 without this exact setup, or with this exact setup, just without 268s and 229s on. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, peace out.